Nobody expected the Dallas Mavericks to be here in 2011. They had been doubted since they blew a 2-0 finals lead in 2006, and then developed a pattern of good regular seasons followed by early playoff exits. But the 2011 squad broke the mold. There was Dirk Nowitzki, the guy they said was soft, couldn't create his own shots, and wasn't a strong leader, standing as the finals MVP. They said Jason Terry wasn't clutch in the playoffs, and I mean, we all ridiculed him for getting a Larry O'Brien trophy tattoo before the trophy itself, but he came up huge, including what can only be described as a very clutch shot over LeBron in the final minute of game five with the series tied 2-2. At age 38, Jason Kidd was a steady leader throughout the finals who dared scientists to kidnap him and study how he defied the ravages of age. In the front office, there was GM Donnie Nelson trying to shake off his father's shadow, and Mark Cuban regarded as a distraction at best. But the suits proved savvy, compiling a team of versatile, selfless veterans. Deshaun Stevenson shot 57% from three-point land in the finals, defensive specialist Sean Marion kept LeBron from taking over, and speedy J.J. Barea started the last three games, providing a necessary offensive spark. Coach Rick Carlisle strove to have the best zone D in the league, and it was new addition Tyson Chandler who made it possible. With him protecting the rim, everything clicked. Offensively, Chandler was enough of a threat to free Dirk from the double team. Plus, his attitude and leadership qualities made him the spirit of the team. This underestimated group of veterans won the NBA Finals. And what's the only thing better than winning? Winning when everyone doubted you. Take that world. Dallas is your new champion. Opponents quiver in your basketball shoes for Dallas does not plan to relinquish power anytime soon. Oh, oh wait, just check my notes. Um, actually, it seems some of them did plan to relinquish power right away. The Mavericks front office decided not to try for the two peat. They looked beyond the 2011-2012 season to the big-name free agents who would be available in the summer and even the summer after that. They decided to make as much cap space as possible, which meant losing J.J. Barea and Deshaun Stevenson to free agency and Tyson Chandler in a sign-and-trade move. As Donnie Nelson insultingly put it, if you want to re-sign those guys, then you aren't going to have a chance at the big boys this summer. A few factors dictated their strategy. First, the 2011 lockout resulted in a new collective bargaining agreement. Second, considering their all-stars were getting older, a new face of the franchise would be necessary sooner rather than later. To avoid the appearance of completely throwing away their reigning championship season, Dallas signed Vince Carter and acquired Lamar Odom through a trade exception. Carlisle seemed happy to think this wasn't a throwaway season, but he might have been ignoring some red flags. Lamar Odom was plagued by personal problems that almost caused him to take a break from basketball, but instead, he joined the Mavs. He played poorly, and in his autobiography, he admitted he didn't put forth his best effort. The outspoken Cuban wasn't shy about his feelings toward Odom, and after a locker room argument between the two, the Mavs deactivated Lamar Odom. Dallas finished the regular season barely above 500. They managed to land the seventh seed in the playoffs, not where you'd expect to be as reigning champs, but don't feel too bad right now, because then you'll have nowhere to go when I tell you what happened next. They got swept by OKC. The Mavericks defense sorely missed Tyson Chandler. With nobody to protect the rim, the Thunder, James Harden in particular, had just a wonderful time in the paint. Meanwhile, Chandler won Defensive Player of the Year over with the Knicks. Just saying. Blame fell to Cuban, seems Donnie Nelson was also at fault as co-architect of the cap space strategy, but it's easier to focus hatred toward one guy. Especially when that guy says stuff like, when I die, I want to come back as myself. The 2012 offseason provided a chance for Cuban to redeem himself by landing one of those shiny free agents he sacrificed Chandler for. The Mavs wanted Texas native Darren Williams, but they were overconfident neither Cuban nor Nowitzki went to the pitch meeting with Williams. Feeling slighted, Williams turned Dallas down. Cuban saved face by starting a mini feud with him in the press. Meanwhile, they lost Jason Terry to free agency. Terry got a solid offer from the Celtics and Dallas wouldn't match it. They had to keep cap space for next summer's free agents after all. They also lost Jason Kidd to free agency, but this one you can't really blame Dallas for. Kidd and the Mavs verbally agreed to a three year, nine and a half million dollar deal but later that day, Kidd decided to go to the Knicks for the same amount of money. He felt the Knicks had more potential. 
Dallas didn't have time to nurse their hurt feelings. They still had to put a roster together. Nelson and Cuban signed a bunch of guys to one-year contracts. That way, they could maintain that precious cap room come summer while giving Dirk some decent co-stars, including a few former All-Stars. OJ Mayo actually had a two-year contract with an opt-out, but everyone expected him to take the opt-out. Problems emerged in the regular season. Dirk had surgery over the summer and missed a bunch of games recovering. The young backcourt duo of Mayo and Collinson wasn't effective. So at the end of November, the Mavs picked up Derek Fisher to be the new Jason Kidd. But after just nine games, Fisher asked to be released. He was a little hurt and was having a hard time being away from his family back in LA. Cuban released him. A bummer, but what are you gonna do? Probably get super mad when two months later, Fisher signs with the Thunder. OKC is about as far from LA as Dallas, but whatever. Dallas didn't even make the playoffs this season. Okay, summer 2013, AKA the summer we've been waiting for. The one-year contract guys and Mayo got out of the way and it was time to sign some big boys. First up, Chris Paul, oh, never mind. Now it's all about Dwight Howard. This time they took recruiting seriously. Cuban and Dirk attended the pitch meeting, for example. But problem is, a team that didn't make the playoffs isn't that much of a hook. And Dallas isn't that glamorous a city compared to LA or New York or I guess Houston, where Dwight ended up. But unlike last summer, the Mavs had a plan B. They secured Jose Calderon at point, Sam D'Alembert at center, and Monta Ellis in the two position. Plus, they still had Sean Marion and of course, Dirk. With a more than decent looking roster, Cuban said he was actually glad he didn't get Dwight Howard. They're better off, who even cares about Dwight Howard anyway? The improved summer yielded an improved season. Jose Calderon provided a deep threat, which opened things up for Dirk, who played well. And Monta Ellis proved to be a valuable acquisition. With a record of 49 and 33, the Mavs slipped into the playoffs as the eighth seed. Against the defending Western Conference champion Spurs, everyone predicted the Mavs' demise and even saw potential for a sweep. But Rick Carlisle had other plans. Utilizing a fluid lineup, a run-and-gun offense, and a swarming defense that saw Sean Marion all over the court, the Mavs took the Spurs to seven games. They absolutely crushed them in game two. And in game three, 37-year-old Vince Carter told the world not to count out old guys, bench players, or the Dallas Mavericks by hitting a last-second three-pointer to win the game by one. Yes! Yes! Do you believe it? Vince Carter gets it done for the Mavericks! While they eventually lost game seven and were eliminated in the first round yet again, this time it wasn't so shameful. They gave the Spurs their hardest series on the way to the title, and Pop had nothing but praise for the team that almost upset him. For the 2015 season, Dirk took a pay cut to free up some cash, and Cuban said he planned to swing for the fences in free agency. The Mavs went for Mello. To help entice him, and perhaps to beg forgiveness from fans, they got Tyson Chandler back in a six-player deal with the Knicks. It soon became more and more clear that Mello was not coming, so Dallas made moves. It was announced via nightclub photo that Chandler Parsons signed an offer sheet with Dallas. Not only was Parsons a very cool dude, he had potential to both contribute now and perhaps be a successor to Dirk as the face of the franchise. Cuban certainly liked him and made it seem like Parsons was more of a plan A. Adding Chandler demoted Sean Marion to the bench, a free agent himself he left for Cleveland. Despite losing Marion, the Mavs actually ended up with more of the 2011 squad than last year, with Dirk, Tyson Chandler, and they got fan favorite J.J. Barea back. Early in the season, the Mavs had one of the best offenses in the league. 36-year-old Dirk was playing less minutes, but Monta Ellis was stepping up as the team's leading scorer. It was the first time Dallas had a leading scorer other than Dirk since 2000. They looked capable of making a playoff run, but there was some question as to how deep they could go. So Cuban traded for Rondo. Mavs love a veteran PG, what can they say? Hopes were high. With Rondo, betting markets went from 16 to one, Mavs winning the finals, to eight to one. But Rondo's kind of, uh, let's just say he didn't fit into the Mavs system. He and Carlisle butted heads, Carlisle sometimes benched him in the fourth quarter, and once in a rather visible sideline argument, Rondo asked Carlisle, why the f did you bring me here? In the playoffs against Houston, things only got worse. Parsons had been battling an injury and only played in game one, which was a 10 point loss. And in game two's 12 point loss, Rondo really didn't fit in with the Mavs system. 
He's got a backcourt violation, perhaps on purpose to make some sort of point. And he was super aggressive with James Harden, picking up a bunch of fouls in a tech. Carlisle was through. He benched Rondo for all but 10 minutes of the game. Then the Mavs claimed he had a back injury and didn't play him for the rest of the series. Dallas avoided a sweep with a Game 4 win, but that's not much to hang your hat on. Plus, they don't give out celebratory hats that say, Not Swept 2015. The offseason saw more of the same. Literally. The Mavs again let Tyson Chandler go with the goal of a big-name free agent. This time, they wanted DeAndre Jordan. Seems the Mavs learned nothing from the past, while Chandler learned to be a less optimistic person. Oh, and Dallas lost Monta Ellis, too. In fact, they didn't even contact their leading scorer during free agency. But maybe it was worth it, because DeAndre Jordan, the league's leading rebounder, verbally agreed to a four-year deal with the Mavericks. The plan Cuban attempted to put in place in 2011 finally worked. Sure, Jordan hadn't changed his Twitter profile to say he was a Maverick, but maybe he forgot his password or something. Now is the time to celebrate, not worry about the little things. An elated and relieved Cuban told the press Dallas would have tanked if they hadn't signed Jordan. But now? Well, what's the opposite of tanking? Blasting off to new heights? The Mavs were poised to blast off to new ha- oh crap. A few days later, Jordan backed out of the deal. With some influence from the Clippers, DeAndre changed his mind and decided to stay in LA. The gold in Mark Cuban's hands turned to dust, and then he breathed in that dust by accident and coughed until he threw up. And who could have guessed the 2015-2016 season was a bummer? Chandler Parsons solidified his total bust status for the Mavs when a torn meniscus ended his season. Dallas faced OKC in the playoffs, but injuries dictated the Mavs lineup instead of Carlisle's decisions. They narrowly won game two after a review canceled Steven Adams' putback, which is lucky because that saved them from being swept. They were eliminated four games to one. That summer, Dallas picked up Harrison Barnes and Andrew Bogut from Golden State, but why were those guys available? Because the Warriors had landed Kevin Durant and needed to make cap space. In other words, the Warriors demonstrated how to first secure an elite free agent and then make cap room. I wonder if the Mavs could have ever done things in that order? Anyway, the 2016-17 season started off rough. Nowitzki's Achilles had been bothering him since training camp. He played in five of Dallas's first 19 games before officially hitting the injured list. By December, Dallas had the second worst record in the NBA. Andrew Bogut said, we probably have a month left to salvage the season. And Carlisle was like, whoa, Andrew Bogut thinks this season is salvageable? Nice. Dirk eventually came off the injured list, but it was too late. Dallas finished with a record of 33 and 49 and missed the playoffs completely. It was the worst season since Mark Cuban took over the team. Nowitzki remained loyal to the Mavs for his last two seasons in the NBA. And while both seasons saw losing records and no playoffs, Nowitzki's legacy still stands as tall as he does. The 2011 Dallas Mavericks scratched and clawed their way to the top of the mountain, but they did not pitch a tent and stay a while. Instead, they immediately peered over the edge and said, wow, look how high up we are. Let's jump and assume an elite free agent will catch us. And whether it was poor recruiting, performing so badly nobody wanted to join, or some light kidnapping leading to a reneged deal, an elite free agent never saved them. But that just shines a light on what was so special about the 2011 Mavericks. They didn't rely on one star to save them. Yes, there's Dirk Nowitzki, a definite star, but he didn't win the title alone. It was a team effort. They won together. And Dallas collapsed alone. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you're so inclined, hit that subscribe button. For more Collapse, we've got Kevin Garnett's Timberwolves, or if you love to feel bad about the Mavs, we've got Dirk's worst playoff game. That'll do it for me, Clara Morris. Good night and good game.